Welcome back. Today we're gonna to do a long-term owner's report of a 2019 Tesla Model 3 that just turned 100,000 miles. The owner's a friend of mine, his name is Pete Bremy, and Pete's actually the bassist for the 60s rock band Vanilla Fudge. Interesting tidbit about Vanilla Fudge, Led Zeppelin used to open for Vanilla Fudge, albeit for a short period of time, but they did open for the fudge. And Pete recently was honored and inducted into the Rock Gods Hall of Fame in Nashville, Tennessee. So congratulations, Pete. We're gonna jump into the video, see how Pete feels about his 2019 Tesla Model 3 after owning it for four years and driving it 100,000 miles. Okay, so Pete, 100,000 miles, congratulations. Thanks. I remember back in 2019, we were at a coffee shop mm -hmm. and uh, we're talking about electric vehicles. You were mm -hmm. asking me a lot of questions and I think you said something like, you know, if there was an EV out there that I like, I might consider buying an EV. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, how about the Tesla Model 3? And you were like, nah, I think it's kind of ugly. The front looks like a fish, I think it was. Yep. Yeah. Um, and uh, But then I got one a couple months later. I had one on order when we were talking about this. I got mine, I think, in like May of 2019. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what changed? It, it was mainly what seeing them in photographs. Yours was, I think, the first one I'd actually ever seen in person. And I'd seen them in photographs. And the photographs I've seen weren't very flattering. They kind of looked like a guppy. Actually, now, I, now I've seen them in real life. I think the Model Ys look like guppies now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I do like the Model 3. Um, seeing yours in person definitely, so that would, yeah, that's what that changed my, it, that, yeah. that changed my opinion of the looks. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting how, and I've said this about other vehicles that I've reviewed, say for Inside EVs and for State of Charge, that when I, I get the initial press photos, I'm like, yeah, I don't like that. Mm -hmm. And then I see in person, I'm like, you know, I kind of like these lines. Mm -hmm. Photographs don't always translate to real life. So I understand what, what you're saying there. Definitely in okay. this case. Okay, so four years. 100,000 miles, you're averaging like 25,000 miles a year. You drive a lot. I do. And I know you go to gigs. Mm -hmm. uh, you also take vacations. You drive right. out to uh, you know, the East Coast. You've even taken it to Florida, yep. right? Yeah, mm -hmm. so you've done some nice road trips with it. Mm -hmm. Let, let's talk a little bit about some things you like and you don't like okay. about the Model 3. Um, give me the first, maybe the top three things that you like about it. Okay, um, I think number one is the Comfort, driving comfort. The seats are extremely comfortable. I mean, I'm six feet tall and I have plenty of leg room. And because there, with a glass roof, there's no thick roof. I can raise the seat high enough. I like to sit high. I like to have support under my thighs. The driving position, the steering, um, and even the with the low hood, the visibility down to the road, it's just very, very comfortable to me. Okay. Um, the sound system, all the creature comforts. All right, um, what, what next? Um, second thing is uh, the handling, handling and performance. I mean- I was gonna say performance. <laughs> I can't believe you didn't say that number one, the uh, instant torque, yeah. how it just launches you. Yeah, well actually, I mean, it is important, but I think the actual, oh, because I'm in the car so much, yeah. And I do a lot of cruising. The comfort is really number okay, one. Okay, so performance I, and handling. The performance and handling is number two. I, I mean, yeah, I, I'm a motorhead from way back. <laughs> so, I mean, I had big V8 cars back in the 60s, late 60s myself. And I'm giving my age away. Um, but um, I do like the performance and the okay. handling. It handles very well. And I, I, I forget sometimes I'm in a sedan. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. I feel like I'm in a sports car, like a Porsche or a Corvette yeah. or something like that, the way it, it, the way it takes off. Okay, how about number three? Um, the low fuel cost and maintenance. Yeah, yeah, you um, can't beat that with an EV. Right. We charge at home primarily, which we'll mm -hmm. talk about later. Yep. And that really, um, it's, it's, it saves a lot of money, oh, which, which, which we're gonna get into towards the end. Right. Okay, let's talk about three dislikes. What are the three things, if you even have three things that you feel you don't like about the car? Um, I think the thing that most annoys me about the car is the nav system. Mm -hmm. It is woefully out of date. Wrong street names. She gives me wrong. She'll tell me to turn left when I should turn right, or I, 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 typically in the area that we're in here, yeah. when I take a back road and I turn on to the local Route 206, it. She tells me to turn north when I'm actually turning south. <laughs> okay. Um, and there, <laughs> in, in my neighborhood, when I, I I navigate everywhere. 
Uh, I don't even know why I do that, but I, even when I go home, when I come, 98% of the time I punch in where I'm going, okay. um, especially when I come down for coffee because yeah. the traffic is so bad, it reroutes me around traffic. Oh, well, there. NAV is one. Right. How about number two? I give Tesla a break on it because it's so brand new, but it is some some of the fit and finish on it. It's a little bit noisy. I wish it was quieter, although I have heard that the, it has been improved over the years mm -hmm. since my car is four years old. But it, even now it has a couple of rattles in it, and it, there's a lot of wind noise. And, yeah, I always and, noticed and the, wind noise in my Model 3. It was yeah. definitely not nearly the quietest electric vehicle that and, I've ever been in. And yeah. tire noise, too. Yeah. Road noise coming yeah. up from the road. That's probably worse than the wind noise, actually, I think. That could be the tires. I have the 19-inch wheels and the Continentals on it. It is a lot of tire noise. Yeah. All right, so how about number three, third I, dislike? I'd be hard-pressed to find a third thing. Those are, are those are the, those are the things I really uh, I think about. I don't really think about a third thing so much. I mean... You I, have complained to me about like the autopilot sometimes, the, oh, the oh, yes. phantom braking okay, yes. and things like okay. that. The, so, fan, the phantom you know, braking you know, you, uh, is... Is is a concern. I'm not putting words in your mouth. I'm no, just saying, no, no, you know, no. You're you're reminding me. You can tell me. we didn't practice this ahead of time. <laughs> We're just going uh, with this. No, that's so, yeah, true. That the could... um, the autopilot does um, it does do the phantom braking. It has gotten better. Mm -hmm. It's not as bad as it used to be, but it still every once in a while. Um, um, gives me uh, yeah, and it scares it, yeah, it, it, it when scares, it happens. And the only thing that really scares me about it, it scares my wife more yeah. than anything else. But it, I always worry on the highway when there's people behind me, yeah. people thinking I'm brake checking them yeah. like that, and they're going to get. Or if they're not paying attention, they could run into you. Yeah, if you don't exactly. Quickly accelerate. Exactly. So, okay, so that that we found three things. Okay. This video, as well as all of the videos here on State of Charge, is sponsored by Q Merit. Once I've helped you decide which electric vehicle charger you're gonna buy, then follow the link in the description of my videos and have Q Merit install it. Okay, so it sounds like there's a lot more things that you like about it than you don't like. We found three, but I know you could have listed a lot more than three things you like about it. Mm -hmm. On a scale of one to 10, what, how would you rate your Model 3? I would have to give it like an eight and a half to nine, basically because no car is perfect. You know, I did list a few things that I don't like about it. The, that could be some things that could be improved. But overall, I'm thoroughly happy with the car. I, I, I four years later, and I'm still excited to get in it to drive it. And that's the truth. I, I, I know because I hear this frequently. Um, okay, so let's talk about. Is there anything you miss from your gas cars? Like, is there anything you would add to the Model Three? Like, like uh, Model Three doesn't have a driver's display. For instance, I mean, is there some, what would you add to the car that it doesn't have? I can answer that in a heartbeat. Grab handles to get okay. in and out. I miss that handle, that overhead handle. My wife does too. She yeah. she really liked my that. My dad hated that it didn't have hand because I yep. would drive my parents around a lot and my father needs it to hold to get in and he didn't like that it doesn't have grab More handles. More than anything else, that's the number one yeah. thing because it, you have to lean back because you have a, such a sloping roof. Mm -hmm. I do hit my head on it occasionally. Yeah. The, the roof does slope back more than than traditional ice vehicles. And, and my wife has, um, she, we're both getting up in age and she's got a bad back and it is kind of difficult for her to get in and out. And she hits her head once in a while. So if she could lean and hang yeah. on, it would be great. So okay. that's the number one and, thing. And that's a legit thing because I know, I, I, I wish my Model 3 had it also. So, okay, let's talk a little bit about charging. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you charge primarily at home. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that. Uh, I've, I've been to your house. I've seen your setup there. Mm -hmm. And you used right. the portable connector that Tesla provided with you. You installed right. a NEMA 1450 outlet. Right. And uh, I know you check that frequently. Uh, I think like once a year, you open it up and mm -hmm. tight, make sure the connections mm -hmm. are nice and tight. You follow my instructions. Yeah. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, but are you- I do too. Are you satisfied that just using the mobile connector as opposed to getting a wall connector or something yeah. that could charge it faster? That's 32 amps versus 48 amps you could have, um, you know, has that ever been a problem? It's never been a problem. Okay, so that's home charging. How about your public charging experience? I know you've used superchargers. You go on a lot of road trips. Mm -hmm. You're always out there. Uh, uh, you charge on the road more than I do. How would you rate, you know, the Tesla supercharger in your experience? It, it's been great. Um, really, I can, I honestly remember from the, with all the supercharging I do, there's only been twice when there, I backed into a supercharger that didn't work. And even then I just moved over one and it, and the next one worked. It was just one charger that was 
malfunction. Have you that. ever had to wait in the queue? Only once in Virginia on our way to Florida. I remember I only had to wait once and that, they, uh, they were all taken, but I was the next one in line and I waited about 10 minutes till somebody pulled out. So that was no big deal either. Yeah. So overall, your, your public charging experience is very good, excellent. Excellent. Oh, excellent. Oh, excellent. Yeah, yeah. that's easy. Excellent. Yeah. I, you know, that's what most most Tesla owners report that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, but uh, and I know I was a Tesla owner. Mm -hmm. It's there's a huge difference between public charging on CCS, DC fast charging, and Tesla superchargers, and that's mm -hmm. part of the reason why the industry is making this transition now over to the next. It's not going to solve everyone's problem immediately just by the connector, but Tesla's network seems to just work. Mm -hmm. So, you know, hopefully it's going to improve the public charging experience for everyone. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk a little bit about, we talked about your charging. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about your cost. How much, how much do you think it's cost you to charge for 100,000 miles? Well, I, 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 uh, the, the maintenance cost or total cost? Charging. Oh, charging. Just charging. Let's talk um, about charging. Charging, the, t uh, the total cost was about um, $3,500, something like that. And you know this because you looked up your yeah. stats, because you have Teslify, you right. also have Recurrent, Recurrent right. uh, you know, and, te you, and you also keep records. The, right. The, Pete keeps records on everything. Like he's one of those guys that just writes all his notes mm -hmm. down and everything and has records for everything in his life, which is a good thing to do. So, I mean, you said 35 or 3,600. Yeah, it? about 35, 36. Yeah, I mean, that's probably right. within... I mean, I know you didn't count for every penny, mm -hmm. but that includes what you paid for superchargers mm -hmm. and, and you're charging at home. In here in northern New Jersey, we pay around 15, 16 cents per kilowatt mm -hmm. hour. I think when you first got your EV, it was like 13 or 14 cents. Right. Price has gone up in the it's last couple 15, of years. 15 cents. Yeah, so, so I mean, that, that's a pretty solid mm -hmm. figure of, of uh, you know, 35, 3600. And just for the heck of it, I looked up, because what I always compare the Tesla Model 3 to is a BMW 3 Series, because it's a sporty sedan. Mm -hmm. They both have features that are better than the other, like the, mm -hmm. the, the BMW's, say, interior is, is, is more plush. You know, the, the Model 3's performance is better. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they both have their pluses and minuses. Now, uh, in 2019, which is what your vehicle was, the, the 330i is probably mm -hmm. Uh, X drive, the four wheel drive 330i, because mm -hmm. you have the dual motor, long range, range. all wheel drive mm -hmm. um, Model 3. So that, the BMW 330i X drive got 28 miles per gallon. I looked it up on the EPA uh, site at the time. So to drive that vehicle 100,000 miles, you would have um, cost, I think it was $10,700. And that's with averaging gasoline at $3 a gallon. Mm -hmm. which I think is very liberal for me to do that over mm -hmm. the last four years. You know, the prices it was down for a while, but it's, right. it's been up higher. So let's say we average at, at $3 a gallon, $10,700. <sighs> so let's just round you. Let's say you were off by a little. Let's say $3,700, okay? Mm -hmm. That's $7,000 savings just in gas. Okay, except I do have to point out that, remember, I did have two years of free supercharging when I got the car. That, that's right. That's in that's baked into his right. uh, your thing. You got two years of free. Right. I, 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 did, I did not calculate the numbers as if I paid yeah. for the super. But you didn't again. pay for it. No, you know, but well, I BMW did. wasn't giving away two years of free gas in 2019. Right. So you know, right. you it is what you paid for. Right. I I I I agree. What you're saying, it would be more than what it is now. Right. But you saved say seven thousand dollars just in fuel if you would have bought a BM a three series BMW at the same time. And that's pretty. That's a Big number. Okay, so my my supercharging cost was about around eight hundred and fifty dollars as I paid. So that that was for two years out of the four. So even if you doubled that, it's still seven thousand dollars savings. Right. So that that that's pretty impressive. How about maintenance? What have you had to pay in maintenance? Um, total maintenance on the car, I added up uh, my my receipts and stuff was around thirty eight hundred dollars. And, and what what what? Give me a list of some of the okay, things. Okay, I'm on. I just I just recently I started on my third set of tires. Okay. Um, and I have the 19 inch wheels, so I have the low profile tires, so I have expensive tires yeah, on, the, on the on, but the BMW on the car. would have expensive tires. Yeah. Too. Okay. Yeah. Um, I replaced. I proactively replaced the um, 12 volt battery. That was one hundred and thirty dollars yeah. or so. Uh, wiper blades, <laughs> windshield washer fluid, and on my trip to Florida, I got whacked in the windshield. So there was seven hundred fifty dollars for a new windshield. For a new windshield, which, which could happen with any, any car, vehicle, any but vehicle. you know we have to we have to include that in your maintenance. Right. Um, that's definitely. So how mm -hmm. much was it in maintenance? 
Um, around 3,800. Around 3,800. So if you drove the 3 Series BMW for 100,000 miles, you'd need about 20 oil changes. Mm -hmm. And BMWs use synthetic oil. Um, I actually have owned BMWs and uh, the... Um, uh, I actually called a friend of mine is a service manager at a BMW dealership. And I said, how much does it cost to change the oil of a three series? And he said, well, we charge between, depending on the year, depending on the model, between $135 and $170 for an oil change with, at the dealership, if you went to the dealership. So if you had, I round that up to say 150, because that's right in the middle of 135, 170. So let's say you paid 150 bucks mm -hmm. for an oil change. You probably can get it cheaper if you went to uh, American Tire or something locally, but if, it's, if you wanted to take your car to the dealership, 20 oil changes at a buck fifty a pop, that's three thousand dollars for the oil changes. Change. You know, and your entire maintenance for a hundred thousand miles, including a, including a seven hundred fifty dollar broken windshield, mm -hmm. was thirty eight hundred dollars. So I mean, you know, we could really dive into this and break down every little thing with uh, tune ups with the the BMW and, and mm -hmm. air cleaners and you know plugs and all this stuff and everything, but um, just going on the easy, the low hanging fruit, mm -hmm. the, the total maintenance and the, your fueling cost, you know, you're so much less expensive mm -hmm. than say a comparable sports sedan. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, you, I, you did good with that. Yeah. I probably should have changed the cabin filter. It's definitely overdue to be changed, but you I'm kind of cheap. You a hundred thousand miles? No, I haven't. But you it's, know what it's I... It's due, dude. It's yeah. Due. But you know what? <laughs> you know what? I, I, I bought this spray. Mm -hmm. That you that for it that you can spray into the duct and it cleans it up, freshens it up. I'm not so driving in your car until you change that awful. <laughs> There's probably some funky stuff going on in there. <laughs> I'll yeah. even come over and help you do it if All you right. want. I changed mine on my Model Three after like twenty thousand miles. Oh, I was yeah? just like, yeah, I want well, to clean I, air. You know why? You know why I didn't? I saw a video on it and, and the guy was having a it lot was, of trouble. It, it, it's not easy. Tesla does not make it easy. To change yeah. the, the, I was afraid the, I wouldn't the, get it back together yeah. again, so I, I, I kind of chickened out. When I had that. my Toyota Tacomas, which I've had a bunch of, changing the air filter was like one minute. You open mm -hmm. the glove box, you right. took out, you, you took it out, you put a new right. one in. The Model Three took me a little while, but yeah, um, yeah I mean it's not that hard though. You just well, I kind of figured if I ever put it in for service again, yeah. that I'll get it You'll done. You get then. it done, then. you let somebody else do it. Okay, finally, let's talk about range. When you first got the Model Three. It was EPA range rated at 310 miles. I had the same model that you did, mm -hmm. except I had the 18 inch wheels. I right. cheaped out, I bought the stock 18 inch wheels. Mm -hmm. You bought the bigger 19 inch wheels. Right. So uh, Tesla didn't do an official EPA breakout with some EV manufacturers will give you different EPA range ratings depending on the size of the wheel. Tesla didn't do that. Mm -hmm. um, so the official EPA range rating was 310, but quite honestly, because you had the larger wheels, it was probably a little bit less. I know the 18s were, were the 310. Mm -hmm. uh, but in any event, um, when you first got the car, what were you averaging, like what you saw the estimated range? What did it say on it? Um, the estimated range when it was charged 100%, uh, when I first got the car, was like 298, 299. It was right around 300. Yeah, yeah. and the most I ever saw it was, because I don't charge 100% yeah. all the time, but I did just out of curiosity, I would check it. Um, the most I ever saw it was 302. Yeah, okay, so let's say 300 miles when it was right. new. Um, I know you used the, the recurrent and Teslafy, mm -hmm. and I saw your recurrent score. Mm -hmm. That said that your range now is like 285. Mm -hmm. So I mean, you've lost like seven or 8% of your battery capacity About in 100,000 miles in four years. That's fantastic. I but that, that is estimated range. What right. I was actually going to ask you, and I'm going to do this live on camera, mm -hmm. uh, could I borrow your car as a follow-up? I want to do a 70 mile an hour highway range test with it and see really how far it'll go. Absolutely. Well, cool. That's Absolutely. A, that, that'll be the follow-up video. You know, because I know I'll get to borrow and, one of your one of, of your course. vehicles, yes. and, uh, and I love the, I love the Lightning. Yeah, you'll probably take the Lightning, <laughs> but um, you don't want the Rivian. No, you take the Lightning over Rivian. Uh, I would take the Lightning okay. over the Rivian. So, yeah. so um, yeah, we'll do that as a follow-up video for sure. I wish I range test your exact vehicle when it was new mm. i didn't i ran i i range test my uh model three when right. i first got it and honestly i don't remember but i'll have to look that up and i'll post it when i do that video um your range test mm -hmm. video but um we'll do that soon too because it's really warm now and i want to do it when it's when it's in warm and weather i'll be very interested to see what you get because my real life range isn't 
It isn't 285. Yeah. I don't get 285 out of it. But you I, don't drive it to the end, and, you know? No, and but, you do everyday driving, which is stop and go, and some yeah. mixed city highway. That's true. That's true. And all, most of my long trips are up north and yeah. uh, where there's a lot of elevation involved. Yeah. Plus, I bring my wife with me, and the trunk is packed front to back, and so is the frunk. So there's a lot of, there is extra weight in the vehicle. We take a cooler with ice and food and stuff. So there's a couple hundred pounds in the trunk. Okay. I don't know that that makes that much difference uh, in the, the you know uh, the weight of having two people in the yeah. car and a little bit, little bit a little bit but, but um, I think more and and yeah that's true I do drive faster yeah. than your seventy mile an hour range test <laughs> absolutely and you know how speed kills your range you know? yeah, yeah. Uh, I did that recently the lyric test at seventy miles an hour then at eighty a dramatic difference mm -hmm. just in that extra 10 miles an mm -hmm. hour it makes an enormous difference when you're talking about the uh the, the air resistance i'd be very excited yeah. to see what, we'll do. what you're well, able to that's do that's next it. we're coming up i want to maybe or before the end of the week sounds good listen pete thank you very much um it sounds like you're uh all on board with evs now would you buy another gas car never never okay. never never and if i would just like to add that i was always open to the idea of electric car because I come from an electric family. My dad never wanted to buy, we had one of the, he had one of the first electric lawn mowers. Mm -hmm. I mean, this old huffy thing that if it got more than four blades of grass, it would quit, you <laughs> yeah. know? And he was, uh, you know, I said, dad, get a gas mower, you know? And said, no, 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 because he comes from, so he came from Switzerland where everything is electric over there. Everything yeah. but the airplanes and cars yeah. were electric. The, the buses, the trains, the trams, everything is electric. So I was kind of in an honor to him. I actually named my my car. You know, Tesla allows you to name your car. I named it after him. Oh wow! Because, I didn't know that. I never oh, yeah. knew that. Yeah, yeah. I, Felix R. Yeah. His middle initial was R. Oh. So I call it Felix R. in, in honor for him. Because I he would be very proud of me for buying an electric car. Well, he would be, he would be very proud. I wish he was alive to see I'm it. I'm sure he's looking down on you and smiling yep. here today. And uh, listen, thanks for coming on. Stay to charge. My I appreciate it. Um, shall we do this again at 200,000 miles? Should, I expect to have it at 200,000 miles, so All right. yeah, All right. it's a that, deal. That'll be fun. Okay. All right, let's, let's both guess now what your battery capacity is going to be at 200,000 miles four years from now. <sighs> I'm gonna say 80%. I was gonna say 80, maybe, yeah, 80, between 80 I mean, and if, 85. If, yeah, if, if it were to hold the same linear capacity loss, you, I mean, you'd be at like, you know, 85, 86, somewhere right. around there. But um, uh, I mean, I can't, I, I think the age is gonna start catching up to it at eight, because the button will be eight years old with 200,000 miles. Listen, if, if you're at 80%, at eight years old with 200,000 miles, that's still fantastic. If if I'm if I'm at seventy or even sixty five percent, I mean we make our our four hundred mile trip to New Hampshire many times a year. That would still mean I'd only have to stop to charge once, yeah, which so, I do now. Well, yeah. So and that's so. How do I know the difference? What would be the big deal? Yeah. I'm still stopping once. If if it's at sixty five percent, ninety percent of original capacity, yeah, it's fine. Might be a little different driving to Florida though. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, Pete, thanks. I appreciate it, and uh, good luck for the next 100,000 miles. Now, Thank you now, so much. Now, it, it put, put your, give me access to your car so I can do the 70-mile-an-hour highway You've got test. it. You've got it. Thanks for having me.